Hi, this talk is about uniformly sampling subgraphs in sublinear time. I'm Hendrik, and this is joint work with Mings and Pan. Subgraph problems are very basic problems in graph theory, but they are also very popular. For example, if you type counting triangles into your favorite search engine, you will get a lot of results and a lot of algorithms to count triangles efficiently in graphs. In this talk, I'll discuss something slightly different. I'll talk about sampling subgraphs in sublinear time. And when I say sampling, I mean that we fix some subgraph, for example, triangle, and we want to sample uniformly at random from all copies of triangles in a given input graph. And when I say sublinear, I mean that we are not allowed to read the whole input graph. So in particular, we are not allowed to enumerate all copies of triangles in the graph and then pick one randomly from this list. In sublinear algorithms, it's very important to define the model of access to the input graph because that defines how powerful a sublinear algorithm is. For example, we might want to allow an algorithm to query for uniformly random vertex from the input graph. For sparse graphs, we might want to allow an algorithm what we often call an adjacency list query. So the algorithm may specify a vertex and it gets in return the ith neighbor of this vertex. So it may specify vertex 20 and ask for the seventh neighbor. For dense graphs, we might want to allow adjacency matrix queries. That is, the algorithm specifies two vertices and asks whether these vertices are adjacent. If we allow all three of these queries, we call this the general model. There's a fourth query that we might want to allow, and that is that the algorithm is allowed to query for a uniformly random edge. And if we allow all four of these types of queries, then we call this the augmented general model. And these are the two models I'll be talking about in this talk. For a quick start, let's have a look at a very simple algorithm for sampling in the augmented general model. And the algorithm just repeats the following until success. It samples as many edges uniformly at random from the input graph as there are in the subgraph H. Then it checks whether these copies form a copy of H. So for example, if our subgraph is a triangle, our algorithm might sample the red edges at the left side and check whether these form a triangle. Well, of course, they are, do not form a triangle, so the algorithm just repeats sampling. And maybe it's lucky this time and it actually finds a triangle. And when it is lucky, it of course returns a triangle. So what's the complexity of this algorithm? Well, the probability to sample fixed copy of H is roughly 1 over m to the number of edges in H, because we are sampling so many edges. And since our edge samples are uniformly at random and independent, sampling a specific edge has probability 1 over m, so the probability to sample a fixed copy of H is just 1 over m to the number of edges we sample. And since the success probability is just a geometric series, the expected running time is m to the number of edges in H over the number of copies of H in G. Of course, it's likely that we can do better. Here are some of the improvements over linear query bounds that we know for the related problems of counting and sampling, and all of them are essentially tight for clicks. In the general model, Goldreich and Ron showed that approximately counting the number of edges requires only n over root of m queries. Eden and Rosenbaum showed that this is also sufficient for sampling approximately uniformly from the set of edges. And turning to clicks, Eden, Ron and Sashadri showed that n over number of copies of h to the 1 over size of h plus m to the edge cover size of h over number of copies of h queries are sufficient. 
for the time being, you should think of rho of h, the fractional edge cover size of h, as a number between h over 2 and h. For the augmented general model, the first thing one may note is that sampling exactly uniformly from the set of edges is trivial because we have uniform edge queries. The approximate click counting algorithm for the general model can be modified such that it becomes an exactly uniformly sampling algorithm for the augmented general model. And Asadi, Kaprolov and Kana show that approximately counting any arbitrary subgraph in the augmented general model requires only m to the root of h over copy of h queries. And finally, in this talk, I'll discuss that this is also the query complexity that is sufficient for exactly uniformly sampling subgraphs. Our main result is the following. For any subgraph h, sampling exactly uniformly from all copies of h in a given input graph g has expected query and time complexity O of m to the row of h over copy of h in the augmented general model. And we also show that this is essentially tied for clicks, even when we require only almost uniform sampling, that is, sampling that is close, for example, in L1 distance to uniform sampling. It's time to tell you more about fractional edge covers. A result by Asadi, Kapralov and Kahn states that for every graph H, there is a minimum fractional edge cover by vertex disjoint odd cycles and stars. And a fractional edge cover is an edge cover where edges are allowed to have fractional weight. And for all vertices, the weights of incident edges sums up to one. When I talk about minimum, I should say what the value of a cover is. And the value of a cover by odd cycles and stars is the following. Every odd cycle of length k in the cover contributes k over two, and every star with k petals contributes k. For example, the cover on the left has value 6.5 because there is a cycle of length 3 which contributes 1.5, there are two 1 stars which contribute 1, and there is one 3 star which contributes 3. But there is also this beta cover with value 5.5. And we define rho of h, the fractional edge cover size of h, as the minimum value of a cover. Let's turn our simple algorithm from the beginning into a better algorithm. For subgraph h and input graph g, the first thing we do is we compute an edge cover of h. We sample row of h edges from g and we hope to sample the edges from our cover. Since it's a cover, we have then sampled all vertices of the subgraph and what only remains are some edges between the vertices. And we check for the existence of these by pair queries. Now, what's the complexity of this algorithm? Well, since we've sampled row of h edges, the probability to find a fixed h is now 1 over m to the row of h. And again, it's a geometric series, so the expected time to find this fixed copy of h is m to the row of h. Great, right? Well, there's one problem. How about odd cycles? As I said, for odd cycles ck, the fractional edge cover size of the cycle is k over 2. And if k is not number, the question is how to sample k over two edges. In particular, how to sample half an edge. Let's look at an odd cycle ck. What we would like to do is to sample every second edge of this cover. We sample k minus one over two edges and we hope to get an alternating path with end vertices u and v. What remains is to sample this last vertex w and we would like to sample it as a common neighbor of u and v. Now we have neighbor queries, so we can ask for a uniform random neighbor of u or v. Say we ask for a random neighbor of v. Every neighbor of v has probability of one over degree of v to be returned. But what we actually would like to have is that every common neighbor of u and v has probability of one over root of m to be returned. Why is that? Well, because then the total probability to sample a fixed h would just be 1 over m to the k minus 1 over 2 for the k minus 1 over 2 edges we sampled times 1 over root of m. And that's just 1 over m to the row of ck. How do we transform the neighbor query probability 
1 over degree of v into our target probability 1 over root of m for all common neighbors of u and v. We use what's called rejection sampling. The problem of rejection sampling is that we are given samples from a distribution p, but actually you would like to have samples from a distribution q. To fix this and to simulate sampling from q when we only have sample access to p, we do the following. First, we virtually scale p linearly so that the minimum probability assigned to any element of our space by p is at least the probability assigned to this element by q. Now imagine that we choose an arbitrary one-to-one -one mapping from this virtually scaled version of p to q, and we are throwing darts at the virtually scaled version. If we had an interval that is mapped to q, we just return whatever we hit. If we hit an interval that is not mapped to q, and which is shaded in my example, we just repeat, so we throw another dart. Formally, this means that our scaling factor s is the maximum of q of i over p of i for all i, and then we sample an element o from p, and we sample an element x uniformly at random from the interval between 0 and 1, and we accept o if x is at most q of o over s times p of o. So if x is at most q of o over scaling factor times p of o. And if this is not the case, we reject and start from step two again. To wrap up, here's the algorithm again. First, we decompose H into an edge cover by odd cycles and stars, and then we repeat the following until success. We sample edges from G as I just described, and then we check whether they form a copy of H using pair queries for the remaining edges. Thanks for watching.